Karibu ndugu Filipe. I want him to introduce the visitors. Nataka apate karibisha wageni ambao wako pamoja na pate kuwajua. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bwana wabariki. Thank you for having us here today. Asante kwa kutukaribisha hapa siku leo. I will try not to speak too long. Sikutarajia kwamba nitaongea mambo mengi sana. But we will see what the Lord can do. Thank you for inviting us and welcoming us in this place. My name is Philip Blair. I'm from the United States. I'm the head of Torch of Christ Ministries. And we have churches in several different countries. And Pastor Stanley here runs Torch of Christ here in Kenya. Let us go to prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we lift you up and we glorify you. You are so good to us. We repent before you, O oh God, for everything that we have done that takes away from your glory. And we lay ourselves bare before you. We put our life on the altar of God today, God. Have mercy upon us. We need more of you. Help us to become less of self so that your presence so that your presence might increase in this place. Fill the temple with the glory of God. We need you. More fire. More glory. More power. More of your love. We need you, Lord. If you take everything from us and we have nothing left but our life, help us to praise you. We need you. Open our hearts to receive your word today. No matter how difficult it might be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very important. Just translate everything I say exactly right. Okay. 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 I'm not saying you're not, but this is going to be a difficult sermon. Amen. God bless you. First, I just want to thank you for having me here, Pastor. Thank you. You have been a blessing to me. I've seen your joy. Your family's been a blessing. We've fallen in love with your youngest son. Uh, we, we are just so thankful for everything. Thank you to your daughter for being a friend to my wife. And for being with us every day. Amen. God has given me a very different calling than most. Different men of God are called to carry different anointings and different burdens from the Lord. I have been called to preach in many places where others will not preach. To preach messages that many are not willing to preach. To speak words that others are not willing to speak. I have prophesied over the United States of America in front of the Capitol building several times. 
We have prophesied throughout the country of Brazil. We have gone to dangerous places. Preached in front of dangerous people. I tell you this just so that you understand the type of preacher that I am. Oftentimes I carry very heavy messages from God. And today I feel as though this message will be a heavy message. If it's not for you, that's okay. But if it is for you, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ, open your heart and just receive. Despise not the chastening of the Lord. Because medicine is good for us. Even though it might not taste good all the time. I promise you I'm here because I love you. And I care about you. I don't know uh, most of you. But I look forward to getting to know as many of you as I can. And my heart is with you in this place. And I pray that God would bless you and your family more and more. And I pray that God would be with you in all that you do. And I pray that as you go in the grace of God, He would not withhold from you any good thing. So with that said, let us get to the difficult parts. Our God is a God of order. The devil brings chaos. But God brings order always. So the, the message that I have to bring today is to challenge you to look at your life and your family and examine yourselves and see if your life is in order before God. Because if it's not, something is wrong. And repentance needs to happen. Repentance is not a bad thing. Repentance is something we must do every day. We live a life of repentance before God. And He chastens us because He loves us. And He draws us near because He cares about our soul. It would be unlike Him to allow you to continue in darkness. It would go against his character. So today I want you to challenge yourselves to take your life and the lives of your family, your mother and your father, your sons and your daughters, and everyone around you, and say, God, I put my my life in your hands. I trust you. Regardless of what I can see. Whether it's good. Or whether it's bad. Whether it feels great. Or it hurts. I put my life in your hands. And you say to yourself. Every day is a new opportunity. Every moment I I can give myself to you again. And today we can start fresh. And we can be renewed in the spirit of our minds. Let us go to the word of God. Go to Ephesians. Chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 23. We're going to read 23 all the way down, okay? 
Ephesians yes. chapter 4, chapter 4 verse, 23. verse 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one to another. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. Hold on, I'm reading 28. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good that he may give, that he may have to give to him that needs. Twenty-nine. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Thirty-two. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Amen. Amen. In 23, it says, be renewed in your minds. You see, when God takes us from death and brings us to life, when he rescues us from darkness and brings us into light, you will not be the same. You cannot be the same. You are not allowed to be the same. We do not have a choice. We have been commanded by God to put away the old things and to put on the mind of Christ to be renewed day by day in our soul to not look like the world act like the world speak like the world we do not live like the world and if the world looks like us something is wrong sitting in church is not enough our life must look like Jesus. Our life must demonstrate holiness. And we cannot do this in our own power. We must do this by the power of God. And I have spoken this several times since I have been in Kenya. You must live a life of prayer. You must live a life of studying God's word. Men of God, charge your wife and say, baby, whatever, you, whatever word you use, if you see me in sin, you call me out. If you see me mess up, you better say something. If I'm not being the example for my children I need to be, you better say something to me. 
and let us go to prayer together because if we're not praying for each other we will fail if we're not fighting for each other we'll be fighting against each other if we're not commanding the devil to go he will cause division between us and our family becomes divided before you know it our children are going into the world because they see daddy preaching but he's not living what he's speaking hypocrisy is the number one reason why children go into the world after growing up in church we must fight for our family let's go to Romans chapter 12 Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I think this explains itself. Don't be like the world. Be transformed by renewing your mind each day in Jesus that you may prove it means demonstrate by showing through a lifestyle of holiness what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God but by not just preaching it or speaking it but by living a life of holiness unto God do you understand let's go to Lamentations chapter 2 We're going to get some practice flipping through our Bibles. Lamentation chapter 3, excuse me. Chapter 3, verse 22. Chapter 3, verse 22. Lamentations 3, 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. Verse 20, go ahead. 22. Yeah. Verse 23. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Twenty-four. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good to those that wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. And verse 26, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. This is one of my favorite passages of scripture in the entire Bible. If we're renewing our mind every day, we can know right here that every single morning, great is his faithfulness. Right here, look in verse 23. They are new every morning. The mercy of God is new every single day. Great is his faithfulness. So it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. Don't misunderstand me. We must always face the consequences of our sin. If you commit a crime and you get caught, you will go to jail. 
Ikiwa utafanya makosa utashikwa utaekwa katika jela. If you do bad things, bad things will happen. But what I'm saying is God will always forgive you. There is nothing that you have done that God cannot forgive. I am ashamed of what I have done in years past. But God has made me new. I'm not the man I was back then. And my identity is found in Jesus. So who you are now cannot be who you were before. And the mercies of God are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. He will forgive you. If you repent and you move from that sin. But you cannot stay there. We must move forward. We have a family to lead. We have a future to live. God has a plan for your life. Every single one of you, God has planned something for. You must walk in that. So many have a purpose in the, this life that they never uh, understand because they're not seeking God. And your potential is never realized because you are not obeying him when he calls you to. You see, God will order your steps. And make sure we use the same word that he's a God of order and he's going to order our steps. He's going to direct our steps. He gives us every single direction and yeah, yeah, step to take. One of order. So if we're out of order, if we go before God, if we go around God, we try and push him down so that we're in a hurry. Do you understand what I'm saying, brothers? Do you understand what I'm saying? Because sometimes we'll say, God, I need, I need this in my life, whatever it might be. And I know it's a good thing. And I'm convinced it's your will for my life. And maybe it is. But some things we have to pray about for multiple seasons of our life. The big things take time. You cannot get a, a, a huge tree that bears fruit unless it has time to grow. You see, sometimes God has a giant fruit tree planned for your life. And I'm speaking in spiritual terms. So God gives us a seed. Just as he gave Abraham a promise. And he says, one day you're going to have a giant fruit tree and many will eat from the sweetness of its fruit. We say, okay, Lord. Woo! I see what you're doing, Lord. You're going to give me a fruit tree. We say, okay. You see, the plan of God is for you to take that seed and to plant it into the ground and you to water it with the prayers of the righteous, to water it with the seeds, of, or excuse me, with the tears of faithfulness, to water it with our tears, with our suffering, with Feeling as though we don't have enough. God gives us more power. More trust. More anointing. So that when we get to that season. Where the fruit tree has manifested. And, and it has finally grown from nothing. We know how to receive it. 
This is the plan of God. Oh, but many of us don't take that path. Sister, do you know what many of us do? Woo! God comes to us. He says, my son, I'm going to give you a fruit tree. And its branches are going to go far and wide. And the fruit's going to be heavy and hang low. And so many will come and take the fruit. And they will taste and see that I am good. And this is God's plan and power, or excuse me, plan and a purpose for our life. So what do we do? We say, okay, Lord, I know what you're doing. So we organize a tour around to all the churches. We see, brothers, I need money for a fruit tree. I ain't got time. We cannot delay. God has put a vision in my soul to give me a fruit tree whose fruit will hang low and it will be so sweet to the taste. I need a fruit tree. Do you understand what I'm saying? We don't want to wait. We get ahead of God. We try and do our own thing. God builds the house slowly. If you build, whether it's your life, your home, your family, your ministry, some kingdom you have an idea of, it will crumble. The storm will carry it away. It will be fragile. And the devil will break it into pieces. This is a heavy thing. Brothers, let's receive it. Because the truth is, all of us have done this in some way. It is our nature to try and do things on our own. Bad church doctrine has been built on these things. God gives us promises in his word. And Jesus says, I have saved you completely. And then we come along and we invent doctrines to put the responsibility on man. But man cannot save himself. Man will never be able to save himself. It is always a work of grace. Do you understand? Let us not try to do what only God can do. We only need to receive his promise, pray in faith, wait upon the Lord, let him renew our strength, walk in obedience, not take one extra step. We do not run back in fear. We put our hand to the plow and we walk forward. We take up our cross. We deny self. And who do we follow? Who do we follow? We don't follow our idea. We don't follow that dream. We don't chase after the vision. We don't strive in the flesh. We wait upon the Lord. Because I promise you, what he builds, no one can destroy. What his plan is for your life, the only person who can stop it is you. The devil cannot stop God's plan for your life. As long as you stay in the perfect will of God. But if you go away, 
If you try and go around, if you try and run ahead of God, if you go any other way except follow him faithfully, it will not happen. We wait upon the Lord. He renews our strength. God is a God of order. He has steps for our life to take. For example, if God has called you to the ministry and you're a young Christian and you are getting your life in order, but there are many things you're still struggling with. Young brother, it's not your season. It's not your season. God has a, a plan for your life, but we wait upon the Lord. What does it truly mean to serve God if we are not honoring our parents, if we are not obeying our parents, if we do not respect our parents, how can I honor God if I do not honor my father and my mother? It does, the Bible does not say honor your father and your mother if they are a good father and mother. Honor father and mother. Respect them. It doesn't mean let them abuse you. But you honor them and you respect them. Because many of your parents are wounded. My parents are wounded. We carry hurt and pain from the past. And our parents need prayer. We need to be long suffering and forgiving. And to labor and prayer for them so that they can be the man and woman of God God has called them to be. And we honor our roles in life. We do not go above our role. We, we don't self-promote. We sit in the lowest seat. So that when it is our time, God says, come up. You understand? We do not participate in self-exaltation. We exalt one another. So that through our brother, God might be glorified. We submit ourselves one to another in the spirit of God and love. And we do everything with a spirit of excellence. We do not live in slothfulness or be lazy. As I said yesterday, we're not thick-headed we obey our parents as we are called to obey God. Because you see, this life is a shadow of the next life. Whereas this life is temporary, life with God is eternal. Life here on this earth in the flesh is temporary. We, we reign with God forever. The grass withers and the flowers fall. We challenge your translating skills. But the word of God stands forever. This life will go away. It will be burnt up with fire. God will judge it. The living and the dead. So everything we do now is in preparation for them, for the next life. He has gone to prepare a place for you. And one day we are going to receive from God many good things. This life is not our own. We belong to God. We are servants unto God. 
We live life to obey the Lord even when it's so difficult. If you want to be greatly blessed, obey God no matter what. Even when the world will call you a fool. When they will think of you and spit on the ground. When the world hates you. Jesus says you are blessed. Amen. Amen. That's my promise. Because a lot of people think I'm crazy. Praise God. Amen. I might be a little bit. <laughs> God directs our steps. And we love him. So I say in my life, I say, God, I will go anywhere. I will do anything. I will speak your words no matter what. If you have access to the internet, go on YouTube and find our channel. And you will find videos, I promise you, of many difficult things God has called us to do. And I do not say that to boast. Because I am a small man and I am a weak man. I don't know a lot of things. Sometimes my wife thinks that I act like that. She said, oh, you're a know-it-all. <laughs> we, we stubborn us men, right? But we are weak. But if we love God with everything, say it with me, say everything. What does it mean to say everything? Do we hold back from God? Understand me now. I'm not looking for any offering from any of you. This is not prosperity message. I want, I want nothing from you. I want your soul to be given everything to God. That is all. Everything to God. Your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, your family, everything. I want you to, I'm, yeah, I want you to just take a minute and think about it. Because many times you say, okay, okay, okay. We continue through life. But do we ever stop to really think about what this means? It is the difference in God's promises. One second. It is the difference between God's promises being manifested in your life or not. And I want God's promise for your life. Yes. Every single one of you. But if your life is out of order, it cannot be. To get to that giant fruit tree, you have to take the necessary steps to plant it, to water it, to wait in faith, to watch it grow, to prune it in due season, to protect it against the wind and the storms. If it becomes damaged, we nurse, nurture it back to health. And one day, it will be that our life is overwhelmed with God's promises. Do you believe that today? Amen. Our roles in the church must be appointed by a God, excuse me, our roles in the church must be appointed by God and designated by Him alone. Yes, yes, sorry. Our roles in the church must be appointed by God 
and designated by him alone according to his word. If it doesn't look like the word, it's not from him. If your pastor, your mother or your father or anyone says something that goes against what you read right here, it is not from God. Pray for them. Rebuke not an elder, but pray for them. Sometimes we lack understanding. Sometimes we need deliverance from oppression in our life. Even those in ministry, especially those in ministry, we get attacked. And Satan comes against us so very much to confuse us. We need prayer. Each of us need prayer. The ministry life is a di it's a difficult life. Because you see, many people will come to us at two in the morning needing prayer. But oftentimes, when we need prayer the most, no one is there. A life of ministry is oftentimes a very lonely road. And it's hard to ask for help. And as a, a minister of God, it's hard to find brothers when you need them the most. Pray for your pastors. Pray for those in leadership positions. And the Bible says, bear one another's burdens. And the love of God and his order is found in this. No murmuring or gossip. We don't need more... Uh, Gossip in our churches. Many women are being busy bodies. Going here and there talking too much. And not praying enough. We know. Amen. The question is, when are we going to repent about it? Maneno, maneno. Para, 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 para. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This happens everywhere. All churches deal with these problems. The devil wants to cause division and chaos and take away God's order for the church. Pray for one another. If someone comes to you with a problem, don't talk about them to others. Pray for them. Because if you help your neighbor, one day they might be the one who has to help you. We need each other. Bear one another's burdens. Let's pray. Let's stand. Dear God, thank you for your word today. Lord, sometimes we need to hear difficult things. We trust that you know best, Lord. We trust you. Help us trust you more. We love you. Help us to love you more. Help us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Help us to bear one another's burdens. Help us to walk in the right spirit. Help us to bear fruit unto righteousness. 
Help us to wait upon you. Show us where you want us to go. Give us the path forward. Order our steps, O God. Help us to not go around you. To not go before you or ahead of you. But to follow you in all that we do. Shine your light so that we can see. Glorify yourself in us. Be with our family. Help us. We repent. Say right now, we repent. Forgive us our sins. Help us to not go back to our sin. Help us to live in holiness. We give you everything. 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 We do not hold anything back. We need more grace. Abba, we love you. Thank you. Amen. So, do you want to pray for them? Yes. Okay. Okay. Maybe there are some of you who do not who do not know Jesus. Before we pray for those in need, we want to give an opportunity for those who want to give their life to Christ. Some of you may have been pretending. Maybe you know God's word. Maybe you go to church every Sunday. You're always here. But your heart does not belong to Jesus. You know religion. But you don't know him. Maybe that's you. Today can be the day. When you begin new. When you can be renewed in the spirit of God. And I promise we will rejoice with you. So we're going to ask you to be brave. And to come to the front. Because you cannot delay. We're not promised tomorrow. So come right now. Play some uh, soft music maybe. Come to the front. Who is ready to surrender to God? Please come. Please come. Please come. 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 So. Amen. Amen. Come on, there are more. Somebody else needs to lay it down right now. Say, Jesus, I don't want to be afraid anymore. There are more here. Please be brave. And just come. We will not be embarrassed. Come. 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 There is one more. There is one more. God said there are three to have come. There are one more. Someone else needs to come. If God is speaking to you, do not deny him. Because if you deny him now, God will deny you in eternity. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, I want you to just smile. Smile. Because I promise you, this is a day of rejoicing. A day of gladness and joy. Because today is your day. 
Now is your time. And God's love is ready to be poured out upon your life. Do you believe? So let's pray together. Raise your hand. Say, Jesus, today I give you everything. I give you my life. I give you my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. Forgive me for all my sins. I surrender. I repent. Jesus, I want you in my life. I know you died for me. I know you died for me. And I know you were raised from the dead. And I know you were raised from the dead. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are King. You are King. You are Master and Savior. Amen and Amen. Say Amen and Amen. Amen. Give Him glory. Lift up His name. Rejoice. Give Him glory. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would be with each person here. I pray that you would pour out your spirit, God. I pray that your power and your glory would move. Take them from glory to glory. Shed abroad love in their soul from moment to moment, from day to day. Let your light and your love shine like the rising of the sun and the setting of the same. I pray every wound in their soul that they are carrying would be let go and that you would help them to lay it down. You would bring healing to the soul. You would bring healing to the mind. You would bring healing down to the depth of them, God, so that when they leave this place, they will begin a journey where they will never be the same, that they will not go back to yesterday, but that their tomorrow will be full of promises. Their tomorrow will be full of grace. The tomorrow yes, will be full of light and love. Yes. Because God, you are a God of light. Yes. You are love. Yes. Shine in this man's life. Yes. Let us grab a hold of the good things that you have promised us yes. and pour out upon them, Lord. Pour out upon him. Yes. Give him more anointing, yes. more unction, more power. Yes. Build in him, Lord God, a life of promises. Help him to carry the vision and the banner. Jesus, Master and our Savior. Bless these souls, God. Bless these souls, God. Everybody close your eyes. Everybody. Close your eyes right now. Today, my life is going to begin New. My life is going to be different. Father, in the name of Jesus, as your child, say out loud, say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as your child, I am asking you to give me everything that you have reserved for me. Hold nothing back. Help me to know how to receive from you. Prepare in me a heart of receiving. Heart of receiving. Help me to receive your love. Help me to receive your love. Not in a broken idea. Not in a broken idea. But in the perfection of your word. In the perfection of your word. Help me. Help me. God help me. Lord, yes. Do you mean it today? God help me. God help me. I'm tired of hurting. 
I am so tired of going through life making the same mistakes. Sometimes I hurt people and I don't want to. I'm doing things I don't want to do. And my soul is broken. And my heart is so full of mistakes. And I carry them. And I remember them. And my mistakes are holding me down. But I want to be made new. I want my life to be full of your promises. Take the weight from my shoulders. Take the burdens from my life. I can't do it by myself anymore. I need you. Just stay right here. Go before God in your soul. And I want you to think about everything that you have done in your life. Every, every mistake you've made. Every time God gave you instructions and you messed it up. Every time you doubted. When God gave you a promise but you didn't believe. You got to say today I believe. I will not doubt ever again. Abba, if you have promised it, it will be. If you need prayer, please come to the front. For those of you who gave your life to Jesus, take this. Okay. Sing it with me with holding. We holding nothing. Say I surrender. I surrender. Sing I surrender. I surrender. You be desperate. You be desperate for God. Because I promise you his power and his grace is sufficient. Be desperate for your deliverance. Because it comes from God alone. So we say right now, fear in the name of Jesus. Fear, go right now, go right now. Fear, go in Jesus' name. Fear, go right now, I command you. Fear, go right now. I command you in the name of Jesus. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And we break the power of fear from your life.